These days, most of us are pretty good about applying sunscreen, especially on those hot afternoons at the pool. But we are confused about how much to wear and what kind to try and a handful of other things. So today, Dr. Decker Deacon with the Huntsman Cancer Institute is here to share five misconceptions you may have when it comes to sunscreen and protection. Dr. Deacon, so I was reading through the notes and I was a little surprised to hear that Utah has really high rates of melanoma. Is that true? That's right. So Utah has almost twice the rate of melanoma compared to the national average. It's it's quite a big problem here in Utah. Why is that? We're just white? We, white, we, white skin? That, that's part of it. That's part of it. A lot of people spending a lot of time outdoors, yeah. recreating, and then the elevation. I think it's a combination okay. of all those things. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of these things. And first is, I think, something we all need to hear. We're not using it as much as we need to. Sunscreen. That's right. That's right. So there's a recent study that showed that people tend to apply about a third to a half as much sunscreen as what the SPF is rated for. So really, people need to be using more sunscreen. If you want to cover your entire body, about a shot glass or an ounce of sunscreen is needed, less if, uh, if you're using less on the body. Wow, I think people would be surprised by that. So think yeah. about that whole shot glass if you're going to cover your whole body. Mm -hmm. and, and we were talking this morning about some of us don't even understand how SPF works. You hear, you know, 35, 50, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. What does that really even mean? SPF or sun protection factor means, uh, for an example, with an SPF of 30, that means you can stay out in the sun 30 times longer and not get burned than if you didn't have any sunscreen. But that assumes that you're putting on enough and reapplying. So, and the, also you need to know when do I normally burn for, for you to know what the right kind is to use. That's right, so if, you, if you're out in the sun during the peak times of day, um, at higher elevation, around water or snow, you may need to reapply more frequently. And we were also um, talking about, we've, we'd heard this rumor, you tell me if it's true. So is there a cap to, so say like SPF 50, mm -hmm. is that like the most you can get or if there's higher, should you go for it? It definitely tapers out, but I recommend patients use 50 or above just because people tend to not apply enough and using a higher SPF will get you some additional protection. And let's talk about the reapplying because uh -huh. that's I think where I fall short. I finally, in my older age, started putting it on my face, but I don't reapply as often as I should. Mm -hmm. How how often should we be reapplying? Every 90 to 120 minutes is our standard recommendation, so pretty frequently, especially if you're out in, in high UV index. That is a lot. Mm -hmm. That is a lot. And you're going to give us a tip on how to make that easier later. But also, let's talk about spray versus lotion. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a difference. Is, is one better than another? I, I hardly ever recommend spray sunscreens. People don't apply enough of it. Um, you don't know exactly where you've applied it. and um, they just don't provide as good a protection as a lotion sunscreen. Dang it, yeah. it's so much easier. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so we want to be using a lotion. Remember that shot glass he talked mm -hmm. to us about, which is a lot. When you think about pouring that much into your hand mm -hmm. to apply to your body, and that's for an adult, I'm guessing. That's right. An adult body. Okay, so do you have a tip for us on kids? How much? Kids, it's going to be proportional, you know, the size of the kid. I, I definitely like sun protective clothing, hats, long sleeves. It means you don't need as much sunscreen if you're covering with sun protective clothing instead. Um, and they make a, a wide range of sun protective clothing for kids and adults now, so that's a good option. I got to be better about that too. Okay, let's talk about something I didn't really know there was a difference either, mineral versus chemical. Mm -hmm. What is that and what's yeah. the difference? Yeah, so mineral sunscreens that contain titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, those reflect sunlight. Chemical sunscreens are made up of a variety of chemicals and absorb the sunlight. The absorption, um, it does tend to fade a little faster. The protection fades faster with chemical sunscreens. It lasts longer with mineral. So I'll use a chemical sunscreen that doesn't form like a white tint most days. That's what I'm wearing right now. Um, but if I go out hiking, skiing, I'm, I know I'm going to be out in heavy sun, then I'll put a, a mineral sunscreen on as well. Okay, so we need to be reading ingredients to know mm -hmm. what we're looking It'll at. It'll say mineral sunscreen, zinc oxide, or titanium oxide, and if it doesn't say that, it's probably a chemical-based one. Okay, a lot of people heading out on vacation. I just got back from 105 St. George. It was horrible, uh -huh. but um, a lot of people will say, I need to get a base tan. I mean, I guess that's hoping they don't burn, but right. does that help at all? No, we, we never recommend a base tan, whether from natural light or from a tanning bed. By the time you have a tan, that means your body is reacting to UV damage. So you've got damage when you've got a tan. So we never recommend that. It may provide a little protection once you have it, but it's not worth the, the UV damage that you're getting to get there. I feel like he's giving me the evil eye. I, I'm a little tan right now, but like I said, 105. Okay, let's, let's talk about um, 
vitamin D. Some people mm -hmm. will use that as an, as an excuse. So right. base hand's the one excuse. Mm -hmm. Second excuse is, but I need vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you help Most us people with that? tend to get enough vitamin D in about five minutes of sun exposure a wow. day. So unless you are really, really good with your sun protection, you're probably getting enough vitamin D. And then there's oral, always oral uh, vitamin pills, which I take because I'm pretty good at, about sun protection. He's like the perfect example. <laughs> he's wearing his zinc oxide, he's taking vitamin D. And finally, people forget that you can actually get sunburn through a car window yeah. or your home window for yep, that matter. Yep. Um, car windows, home windows, they block a majority of ultraviolet B spectrum light, but not ultraviolet A spectrum light. And ultraviolet A does cause sun damage, um, photo aging, uh, can cause skin cancer. So important, especially on your long car ride to St. George, mm -hmm. uh, put on sunscreen in the ride. And I said you would have a tip for us because you say um, the easiest way to make sure we remember to apply it is to keep it handy at all times. Mm -hmm. So you said keep it everywhere. Keep it in your pocket if you can, your bag definitely, car door, anywhere that you have it accessible, you're more likely to put it on when you need it. Okay, the, the tongue twister doctor, Decker Deacon, telling us we got to keep it handy, we got to do the full shot glass, mm -hmm. all those things we got to do so you don't have the sun damage. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. Thank all you. All right, we're going to post all of these sunscreen misconceptions as well as tips, some other tips for you on our website at studio5.ksl.com.